Today we're going to be talking about JavaScript label statements and how to use them. Now this is a feature of JavaScript that is not used very frequently and probably not known very well. However, I have found it very useful in a few situations. It makes the solving of a problem much easier. And so I want to show you what that situation is and in turn you will learn about labeled statements and how to use them. So let's begin by describing what a label statement is and how it might be used. So first off, this is how you would set it up. You create an identifier. That identifier is whatever you want to call it and that is followed by a colon. Then following that colon is the actual statement. Now, what this does is it provides a name for that statement and because it provides a name for it, you can then refer to it later using break or continue. So you can't just jump to that statement. That's not allowed, but you can use the keywords break or continue with those labeled statements. Now, as you know, break immediately breaks out of the innermost loop that you're in. Well, perhaps you want to break to a point that's higher than that, more than the innermost loop. Well, you can do that with a labeled statement. You can break to that label. Continue would allow you to continue in the loop by labeling that loop and then indicating that you want to stop the rest of the execution within that loop and continue at the start of the loop again. Now, continue does that by default. So I haven't found a situation where I found it necessary to use a labeled statement with continue, but I have found that with break. So when you use a label statement with break or continue, include the label identifier without the colon. For example, if I wanted to break to a labeled statement so that it would jump out of that statement, usually that's something like an if statement, and then continue on with the code below it, I would use break and then the identifier for that label. All right, let's look at an actual example. First, I'm going to set up the scenario. So let me jump to Sublime for that. Now here in my JavaScript file, I have an array set up. And this array consists of 10 elements. Now here's the scenario. Let's say I've created uh, some sort of application. Let me use the idea of a course. And in this course, the person going through it has to retrieve certain scores at certain points throughout the course. Now it's not linear, they can jump around. And so the scores could be achieved at any time, as I've indicated here with the way this array has been set up. They receive the first score, then they receive the fifth, and so on. And in this case, they have all the scores in the array now. But what if they had missed some? Well, I want to make sure that when I'm totaling the final value that I check to see if they've missed a score. And if they have, I don't want to give them the total. I want to tell them they've, they've missed something. So that's, that's the scenario. Now to do this, I'll, I'm first going to set up a couple of variables. One is the total. That's what we're going to add everything into. And then the other is simply a variable that I've set to false. And this will allow me to determine whether they've done all of the responses. Then if they have completed all of the responses, then I can do something like this. This is just a simple log statement, but I'll give them their total or I'll tell them that they need to finish some items. Okay, so if all responses equals true, then your combined total is, otherwise you need to finish some items. So now how would I handle this? Well, let me put in some code that will partially get there. Now here's what we're doing. First, I have an if statement. I want to check to make sure that they at least have some score in the array. And so I check the length property of it to see if it's greater than zero. Then we have a for loop where we're just cycling through those scores. And then inside of that for loop, I check each of the scores to see if it's not a number. If it's not a number, I don't want to add it to the total. In that case, I have a break statement. 
Otherwise, I total the scores. Now, if we look back at the break statement, the break statement is going to break out of a loop, the for loop. Well, notice what I do at the end of the for loop. If it makes it successfully through the for loop, I set all responses to true. That's how I know that it has found a number in every instance. However, the problem with that is if I break, it will execute that as well. So this is where I can use a statement label. I'm going to label the if statement. I'm just going to label it compute total. Now the if statement has a label. Now when I break, if I break compute total, then it will jump out of the if statement. And so the all response will never be set to true. Now think about this. The only time break happens is if I encounter something in the array that is not a number, meaning it, it could be undefined or maybe something else got in there. Who knows? But if it's not a number, they need to go and get a number. They need to get a score for that. All right, so let me save this. Right now, I have all of them entered within the array. So let me jump out. I'm going to display the console, and then let's go ahead and refresh. And it tells me your combined total is 72. And so it successfully got a total because it didn't find anything that was not a number. Now, if I were to comment out one of these lines, that means it's going to be a sparse array, meaning there's going to be an empty place in it. Well, that empty place will not be a number. So it's going to execute this break. So let's see what happens now. Let me save that. Jump out, refresh, and it tells me you still need to finish some items. Now think about how difficult it might be to solve this problem without a label statement. The logic is a bit difficult to sift through. For example, if it's not a number and you set all responses to false at that time, it will still be set to true at some point. Or if you change this and set it to false within this part of the if statement and set it to true in this part of the if statement, that might work in some situations. But what if you have a number after you don't have a number? Then it's set to true, and you don't get the correct response down here. It thinks all the responses have happened when actually one has not happened. So that's why the label statement is very useful in solving this problem, because it allows us to jump past some code that would normally execute and have it not execute. Now, this is a simple example. There are probably several different things I would do differently if I were writing this for the final version of the code, I would handle the array differently for, for one thing. What I want you to see is how statement labels can be useful. So hopefully you found that useful. For more information on JavaScript, you can visit our website at All Things JavaScript. You can subscribe to our channel. We try to release a new instructional video once a week. And if you're subscribed, you will be notified about that. Thanks for watching.